Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to this video about React Router hooks. So in this video, we're going to look at two specific hooks, the use history and use params hook. And um, before we get started, uh, I'd like to note that we are going to use the code we created in the previous video. So if you haven't checked that one out, you can do so, or you can find this code down below in the description box as well. So for now, we'll navigate to the dashboard component and I will just um, create a new variable. I will call it history. And I can assign the use history function from React Router DOM to it. I'll just change this to React Router DOM. And now I could, for example, lock history. So now if I go over to my app and give it a refresh, you will see we get an object and there are different kinds of properties on there. Go, go back, go forward. Um, but in this video, we're going to take a look at uh, push, location, and go back. So let's say I want to um, push users based on a button click from this component to the um, login page. So what I could do, I could create a button and I will say go to login. And then we can add an on click event handler. And it will um, call an arrow function. And then the history dot push. And we can then push to login. So now when I save it and click right here, you'll see it will just push us to login. Um, you can do this with state as well. And right now we're not pushing with any state, but let's say we have, um, let's say we have some data, right? That would just say const data and it will just be a random number. Let's say we want to pass that on to the login component. Then I can pass an object with data. And now when I go back to the uh, logging component, I can actually use that same logic. But we of course, we need to import this from react router dumb. And now if a console log history, let's go back to dashboard. So I'll clear the console. So as I click right here, we get the history being logged in our, in our login component. And now you see right here under location, we get a state object with our data. So it's always good to know that you can also push to a certain page um, with some data. The next thing is link and Right now, what we're doing, we are actually assigning an on-click event to this button, but often in apps, you also have just a link that you can click. And in React, we can do something like this. We could say link, and we'll say to um, login, and it actually also needs some content in between, so we can say go to login. And now we just clarify that this is a link and we can import this link also from React Router DOM. So now when I save it and I go back to the dashboard component, you will see we got this link, which you can see down below will redirect this to login. Now you might ask yourself why we are using this link since we can also use um, an anchor tag. It could do something like this. However, the problem, and I won't get into the nitty gritty of it, but the problem with this is that it will cause a refresh of our application. And well, most of the times you definitely don't want that. So for now, um, I can remove this and I can just always recommend you whenever you want to create a link uh, that, you know, links to another page in your application, just use link and not an anchor tag, unless you have a very good reason 
uh, to do so. Um, so the next thing I'd like to show you with the use history hook is go back. So let's say once we are on that uh, login page, we also want to have a button that pushes us back to the previous page. So we could say go back. And also this will take in an on click event. We'll get our arrow function and then we can use the history dot go back function. And now you will see when I click right here on go to login, we'll see that go back button. And once I click it, we go back to the dashboard. Um, so that's something you also often will use in your apps. So um, that was it pretty much for the use history hook. Um, the next one I'd like to show you is use params. And what you often see in applications, and I will just grab the example of Twitter. Um, let's do Brandon Ike. Oh, I made a typo again, Brandon Ike. There we go. So right here we have always tweets. And if I click on one of his tweets, you will see we get this number. And this is actually the ID of this tweet. So what often happens then is that this is simply a list of tweets. And once we click on that tweet, then we get to a new page where this component, or at least on this page, a new fetch is being made to get the actual data of the tweet. And of course, also the, um, the responses and, and so on. So we could kind of like do the same in our application. Um, and for that, I will make a new component. I will call it um, tweet. And it will go to the tweet component, which we are going to create in a minute. And right here, I could say slash, put that colon in here, and then say, for example, tweet ID. And this will allow us to kind of like grab that tweet ID from the URL. So if we go back to our app, so I would just create a new component in our components folder, tweet.jsx, and it will show tweet. So now when I head over to um, tweet and just add like a random thing right here, now we can use the use params hook to grab this number or ID, you could say, from the URL. And what I will do, I will say const, I want to take the tweet ID and say here, use params. But of course we need to grab it from React Router DOM. And now we could say, um, for example, you, the tweet ID is tweet ID. Now when I save it, you will see the tweet ID shows the exact number that's right here and I can change it in, you know, whatever I want and it will work. And you can imagine that if we now want to fetch the um, data of this tweet, we could do like something like use effect and do our um, data fetch in there using that ID. So there's definitely more you can do with React Router DOM and I can recommend you to head over to React Router DOM and then right here you will find React Router DOM, the official web page. And this is the complete documentation with all the things you can do. But in most cases, um, this is what you will be using the most for your application. And um, yeah, that was it pretty much it for React Router DOM and its hooks. And I'd like to see you in the next video.